Now, you said earlier that you uh, were directed by Steven Seagal. On what film is this again? On Deadly Ground. On Deadly Ground. Uh, <laughs> uh, who is, a, who is a, a little bit crazier, him or, or Oliver Stone on the uh, crazy scale? Well, Oliver's not that crazy because he's so smart. Okay. Uh, and he is, in fact, the smartest guy in the room. He uh, is. And so if you can hew to his direction, Oliver's like a, uh, he's tantamount to a, a Kentucky, Kentucky Derby thoroughbred with blinders on creatively. And if you can get in that vision that his blinders are, are uh, dictating the parameters of, yes. it's nirvana. If you want to operate outside that creative vision, it's a little slice of hell. And since I've done <clears throat> six movies with Oliver. Six. Um, six. six. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yes. I, I've seen people try to operate outside the Oliver's vision for that particular piece. And so the, Oliver and Stephen are uh, two different creatures. Obviously, I, that, that's understood. But. And so if you can get an Oliver's creative vision for whatever, whether it's talk radio or platoon or Wall Street or any given Sunday, I could go on. Um, <laughs> but if you can get in that, uh, in that sweet spot, yes. it's heaven. How'd you get in his radar originally? I auditioned for Platoon, and I got a tiny role, and then it went belly up and it was not shot for two years. And then when it was reconstituted two years later, Oliver offered me the fourth lead in the movie, Sergeant O'Neill. And we went off to the Philippines, revolution-torn Philippines, and we shot Platoon. And it felt like you were at war, correct? We did a three-week boot camp um, in revolution-torn Manila. Mm -hmm. And then we started shooting the film largely in sequence, which is unheard of. So as people's characters died, they left. And so that started out eight times three is 24. So it started out with 24 of us. Um, and then by the end of it, there's three or four of us left. And that, that uh, diminishes how much the actors have to act because everyone is gone. You don't have to act like they're gone. They're gone. And so the lens suffers... If you can reduce the profundity of a lie mm -hmm. in front of the lens, it, it experiences that as good acting. And so the way Oliver set it up, the arc of people's stay in the Philippines was dictated by when you died in the script. And because he shot it almost chronologically, as you died, you left. And so the actors who were left at the end of the film, uh, th those long faces and that, and that fear in people's eyes because there was a a threatened coup every Thursday because the president did not have the military in her back pocket, a woman named Cory Aquino. There was always this well, threatening remember. buzz of a coup and there'd be no better person in a coup than American actors to take and, and, and use as whatever you need. Jeez. And so when someone calls action and all of these things are roaming around in one skull, the camera sees all that and it, and it cooks, it really pops in front of the lens. It sure did, man. It sure did. That movie was, it's still to this day. Yeah, he is. nailed that one. Oliver did two tours and he tore that film out of his sternum. And remember, when we got home, the big hit and what people were experiencing as a, as a war movie was Top Gun, which was kind of a Reagan era celebration of, uh, of, of mechanical war. And that's not what we shot. And so when we got home and Top Gun was the big hit, you know, we, we largely concluded that, that we'd wasted about four months of our lives. <laughs> and then it turns out that Oliver is going to release it at Christmas and nothing says Christmas yeah. like Platoon. There's just nothing says Christmas like Platoon. And so then it came out and, and it, did, it did what it did. Oh, my gosh. That's unbelievable, John. That's amazing. Uh, in, uh, you know, we, it's, it's funny how we, we mentioned off there, I'll, I'll mention here as well, William Daniels, the actor, uh, who you've never worked with, correct? He's I not, have not. He's I certainly know who he is. He's 91 years of age. Um, he, he, he foiled a robbery in his house and, um, he was credited as boy meets world actor. And I thought that that on behalf of those who watched him in the graduate and St. Elsewhere, and uh, 1776, it was an outrage for him to be described as that. Brockman, you, you, you knew him from a Boy, boy Meets World. Big Boy Meets uh, Principal okay. Feeney. If you um, were ever in a similar situation where you fought, fought off an intruder, and it's John C. McGinley fought off an intruder, right. how, how would you want to be from your oeuvre? That's too easy. How would you want to be identified, John, John C. McGinley? I would want to be Down Syndrome and Special Needs Advocate Champion par go. excellence. It's the easiest go. thing on the planet.
Because that's what you are when you're not that's an all actor. I care about. I know that. I know that. And it's our 50th anniversary of the Special Olympics this year, and I've been uh, invited to go give a uh, keynote speech in Washington, D.C. on November 30th. Fantastic. For a big gala dinner, and uh, that is thrilling to me. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern, on Audience.